Yo guys, what's good? As here presenting another installment of Quick Cuts. Today's feature, FC Villa. Let's go! FC Villa's passive is Thrust 3, dealing 30% damage and stunning opponents for 5 turns upon taking damage on a hit. She gains 1 additional mana if the target's health is above 80%, or removes 1 mana from the target and gains 1 mana if the target is below 30% HP. She can only make use of her Executioner passive if she receives the command mark. When a target marked with Executioner dies, all other marked enemies lose 20% of their attack. These are all shared with regular Vela as well. If FC Vela gets hit with damage that exceeds 70% of her max HP at once, she will reduce all received damage by 50% for 2 turns, including the triggered hit. After 2 turns, it increases all damage by 30% for 3 turns. Jackals is a unique passive. It activates when targets with Executioner mark gain 5 or more mana. It decreases their attack by 10% for every mana they have, but will be removed once it with skill. As 1 deals 60% damage to all back row enemies, and as 2 750 to 1 enemy. Both will mark the target with Executioner if the target survives. If the target dies, all allies gain 2 mana. Now onto gear and stats. Focus on as much attack and speed as possible. You want her to hit hard. Alright, let's do some PvP. Okay, so here's the team I'm going to try out with her. Bathory, just because I'm not really confident in Valar's survival and because I want the additional mana gain, then Reva for the damage, Talia as my dedicated healer, Valar I'm using as off tank, some sort of damage dealer, tank hybrid, and Burnivus is my CC machine. So because this week is tag team and it's really hard to showcase her in tag team, I will just pick the people above me and we will see how it goes. So this guy seems like a good team. We will just start a friendly game. I pick teams that usually are a little bit more challenging in order to provide realistic expectations of a certain hero. I will select teams that I know that are really difficult to beat or might even be a bad matchup for the team that I selected. So here in this fight the general problem is that I lack the burst damage. Burnivus as a CC machine is really great, but against teams where you have to burst through multiple strong characters, dragon blood characters, tanks like Ulum, Bathory, this is definitely not the right strategy. However, Bala would be great in a matchup like this if paired with Garf. The lack of her executioner marks makes her so much weaker than she could actually be simply because of the fact that the attack power reduce will affect wrath which makes fight so much easier Allah has really high mana cost in comparison to some other heroes but due to her trust ability this gets set off a little bit so she can really be used to quickly burst somebody down being a defensive type she also gains mana when being hit. At the start of a battle, when she is in the front row, this can provide you with a large mana influx just by getting hit, retaliating, and if you pair her with some other mana gain ability, she can really do some work for you. One interesting thing about Thrust in general is its weird interaction with other passives. So let me quickly explain what I mean with that. So when you attack somebody and they have the counter ability or wrath, they will retaliate against you. And this is where your thrust ability kicks in. So you will thrust against them, stunning them, and dealing 30% damage, which is pretty awesome. Additionally, the thrust passive procs before the block passive, which is the passive of Ulum or other taunting characters. Because it triggers before, if you by any chance reduce their HP to less than 30%, you will kill them. And her S2 can hit really hard with the 750% multiplier. You should play around with it if you get the chance. So speaking about interesting passive interactions. Every time she uses thrust and the enemy is above 80% HP, she will get a mana. So think about this. The round starts, you have let's say Bathory or Rachel, uh, Shufrak and anybody with uh, that mana gain ability and she's in the correct role. So you already have one mana. Then she gets attack which increases her mana by one again because she is a defense type. Now she retaliates and she gets another mana. That's already three mana. So you can right away use her as one. If another character would hit her, 
In a lot of cases you might be able to use your S2 right away. Maybe you have seen in the previous fight how hard it hits. If it wasn't for Bathory, the Xeon would have been one shot, no questions asked. This is hard hitting. In my opinion this could be on par with Rudley just because of the mana gain. Yes Rudley has the burst and will be able to do this in endgame even better. However she is not to be underestimated. She is really fun to play with, her lolly outfit makes her kind of interesting, especially because she has this aggressive lolly type. If you watch her animations, they are amazing and it just looks really great. However, without the pairing of Garf, she kind of lacks a little bit of the final punch that she needs to be a great character. If paired with a Garf, she could go up from a mid-tier character to a higher mid-tier lower good tier character she is still not taking the crown simply because she is a defensive character with lower attack stats and lacks a burst ability additionally a character that has to be paired to be good automatically gets a small minus in my books because you might not have the proper pairing for it if you would compare it to rudley simply because he is also paired with command marks the big difference here is Rudley's skills are not dependent on the command mark. They are enhanced. However, Vala without command marks is just another damage dealer. He could be replaced by similar characters, somebody like Astarto who has a higher multiplier and does similar things. Unfortunately, this leads me to the conclusion that she won't have a place in my teams anytime soon, at least unless I get Garf. Just being fun to play with doesn't cut it in the higher ends of arena anymore. The character needs to provide something solid. Either be it dragon blood passives, high multipliers, good synergy with other characters, something like that. If you have her without Garf, I would personally put her on the back burner. I really hope you enjoyed this episode and if so, consider subscribing, give this video a like and let me know in the comments if there's any character that you want to see in the future installment. As always, I will see you in the next one and until then, enjoy the grind.